right we're back again this light seems very inconsistent okay so we're back again for this thing uh we're going to do some more lm324 fun uh, in fact we're returning to a project i previously was working on uh and so last time we did this oh look that's a bit weird uh, maybe that's not a bit weird um so we were doing this thing where we were um, measuring the voltage and using that to make a bar graph. Uh, so originally we started off and there was the um, uh, potentiometer which I've taken off and we have an LDR with a, a voltage divider with a light dependent resistor which is that thing which you can't quite see which is there. Um, we're not using that today and then we went on to using a capacitor and so a charging capacitor so when I hold down one of these buttons uh, the capacitor charges up and then when I hold the other one down the capacitor discharges with a different um, uh, resistor so they discharge at a faster rate. I'm going to go through that in a second how that works again just to refresh everything. Uh, we're going to build on the circuit, um, but the first thing is I've added another, there's actually two LM324s now, which is why there are now six LEDs, when before there were only, um, only, <coughs> pardon me, um, four. So I'm going to cough a bit, and I'm feeling a bit sick, and the reason I haven't made any videos recently is I've been a bit ill. Um, and hope, I was hoping to have done this video last night, but, um, Things did not go too well. Uh, I, my camera ran out of batteries. So let's get this doing, let's get it done today. So I'm just going to reiterate what I did. So here we had this uh, resistor ladder, a voltage ladder, a resistor, <laughs> voltage ladder, resistor divider, voltage divider, that's the word, um, here, and they're being fed into the uh, inputs on the uh, the LM324 which I'm using as a voltage comparator so if the voltage that we're reading in so this is our test voltage in this case it's coming from a uh, capacitor and a resistor so the midpoint of those two are in series um, and as the resistor charges the, the capacitor charges up um, there's more voltage being read at the um, across the capacitor and less across the resistor uh, which is what we're doing here so that's what this little capacitor here is doing that's what we're charging up uh, and that's what's storing the voltage here so <coughs> it works pretty well um, and so there's four in this case here but now there's six and these are just going so they're outputting high if the test voltage is higher than the voltage across this thing here so this one we have a whole bunch of resistors there's like one volt approximately here because these all resistors are all the same so this is important because we're going to change this in a second and going back to our 4011 stuff so this is going to be where we're going to put the 4011 so this is what this will i see sitting over here is it's a 4011 and we're going to add this in today and primarily we're going to make uh, one of those RS flip floppy things that I've tried to make and keep getting wrong every single time I've made them so if you go back and watch my hilariously ridiculous pointless videos where I make mistake after mistake um, about the 4011 uh, you'll see where we're up to uh, we're going to use this <coughs> sorry um, and this is the circuit that we are kind of going to make well this is not the exact circuit but the first important thing here is is that there's more than there's more than two of these ones in the middle. So these are the ones that are going to the LED. So I should probably just draw in. Hold on, oh, you can't see this. Uh, I'm just going to do a cross and a cross. That's like a little old school lamp symbol. So they're going to the LEDs. Uh, but instead of having my voltage divider being divided up exactly as I had before. So I can't remember, why did I use D? D for divided, um, or divided part, I don't know. Should have just stuck with R. But um, we're going to have some little ones on the end. So they're going to be, so these, all these resistors are going to be the same. And these ones are going to be lower. And they're just going to be um, at the ends. And these two little up amps aren't going to be used to make an LED come on. They're going to be used to trigger the the flip-flop or the, the latch. <coughs> so I'm going to try and explain this in a second. <coughs> so excuse me. One thing we have to talk about is 
when I when I charge it all the way up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it all the way down to zero, and then I'm gonna start charging it up, and it's gonna go all the way up. And then you'll notice that the top one actually doesn't work anymore. It, it stops. It, it goes out. But it's actually it's actually there. So this is quite funny, I think. And when you measure the voltage across the capacitor. Uh, you'll notice the voltage will go down. See, that, you're like, oh, the LED came back on again. So we'll charge it back up all the way to the top. And then we'll, if you, I don't know if you, hopefully this can all show up. And I'll put that there. And you'll oh, charge it all the way up. Oh, it was charged all the way up. Here we go. And it will set up at four. It will go down. And we we'll probably should start working about the 3.5 volt range. So, Four, three. It's very hard to tell because it goes down quite fast. So I think that's quite funny. Like these things, it, it it's discharging through the multimeter, um, and it discharges a lot faster than it does through the LM three two four. So that's quite that, that's a good sign for the input impedance on those ICs. At least from my point of view, not from I'm sure like everyday points of view. So like I'm sure everyone will say, well, there's so many better things to use than an LM three two four, which is true but I'm just making this silly little circuit here um, so this is the bit here with the resistor and the capacitor <coughs> and so what's going to happen so here's my RS flip floppy thing and uh, we're going to ignore the output of so let me put the little picture oh I've actually completely forgotten so the neat thing about this is you get two outputs, one of them which is the opposite of the other one, unless, you've hold, unless you hold both the R and S to low, in which case you get out high on both of these, uh, as we have gone through many times before uh, and worked out. Um, so this one's the opposite of that one. I'm thinking now I could just swap them around. It, doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Um, so this one here, I'm only taking the output from the Q. So on this thing here, but I'm going to run it through um, an inverter to buffer the signal so that there's no interference from the charging. So what I'm going to use is the output of this is going to either be charging the capacitor or it's going to provide a path to discharge the capacitor. Um, and the idea is, so this one here, this comparator here, it's going to compare, so that little bit about Sorry, I've completely missed the part about why the light goes out um, when you charge it all the way up. And I think that's just because the LM324 uh, doesn't really work rail to rail. So the inputs don't, uh, it doesn't really work when the inputs are going too high. So it works when the inputs are down close to zero. So that's fine. But if according to the specs, if you get, we're like, they only go, they're only like valid up until 1.5 volts from the supply voltage. So in this case here, the supply voltage is 5 volts to the thing, but it's coming from here, uh, which is also the maximum voltage you're going to get. Well, you're not going to, it's not the, the maximum voltage because the voltage that you're actually testing is this one here. So on the previous circuit, this seemed to be fine. So being one volt from the five volt thing was, well, it worked fine for this circuit. Like I'm sure it doesn't work fine for other circuits. But now that I've added a few more, so there's actually like a couple more um, resistors in there, uh, all of the same, all of exactly the same. So they're all 33Ks in this case here. Um, then the top voltage is quite a lot, is probably quite a bit closer. So probably like four point, I don't know, I'm just going to guess. It's like 4.2 or 4.3 or 4.4 volts. Um, and that's too high, and I guess it just it doesn't work the way you suppo it's supposed to work once you get the inputs being that high. Um, which is why I think once you've charged it all the way up, the, that last one goes out, and then when it when it discharges down a bit, it comes back on again. So we'll do that in a second, um, without me having to do anything. And you can kind of track how long it takes to discharge. Um, but we'll help it out a bit. Hold on. So it comes back on. So now it's, then it's on, it goes off and then it should come back on in a second. Um, so the idea is I have put in a, another one here which is just about a buffer resistor. So I just kind of want the maximum voltage to not be too high. So I'm going to shift everything down a bit by putting a reasonable size resistor at the top here. So all these voltages, uh, 
so maybe this one uses one fifth of the resistance so there's like one volt used up there and then the rest of my shenanigans can come down and be used within here it doesn't matter too much it just changes the timing of what i'm trying to do in the end uh, in theory and so the idea is this one is going to be comparing um, the input volt i don't think i've labeled them properly have i uh, I, f I think oh i forgot they go they go the opposite way around uh, so this one here is, uh, the output is going to be high, um, except when the voltage goes over a certain point. So I've got to try and work this out. So the idea is, is that these two here are comparing the limits. So once it gets too high, I want to turn off the output from this and discharge the capacitor. Uh, and once it starts discharging, so it's going to switch into the state where it's discharging, it's going to latch into that. And then once it gets back down to here, the voltage from this will be high. So by default, I want these ones to have a high voltage so that they don't change what's happening here. So once it gets too high, this will get low. If this is low, that will go high. The output from here will be high and the output from here will be low. And then this one will be high. Have I got this right? I haven't got this right, have I? I've got it the wrong way around again. Doesn't matter, I'm just going to play around with the wires until I get it right. And then the other one has to be the other way around. So when the voltage gets too low, this one's going to go low, uh, which, is the, which is the standard way of doing things. Um, so on this one here, I'm going to swap the inputs, which I think is what I've done. So on this one here, uh, I've swapped the inputs. So when this gets, by, by, when it gets this high, then it will go low. And when this one gets too low, this will go low. But in, in the middle region, they'll both be high. And remember me at the RS latch thing, is that when they're both high, it keeps the state of what it was before. So <coughs> it latches on and doesn't change. So here we go too low, this will go low. The idea is this will, um, the output will be high and then it will start charging back up again. Uh, and, and hopefully when you start off, of course, the voltage will be zero. Ish, um, and then it will uh, it will start then it will start charging up and then it will charge up here and it will keep it will keep being charging all the way till it gets to this point uh, and then this will go low and that will that will flip it around and then it will start discharging and it will keep discharging until it gets down to this point and then it will start recharging so the idea will go backwards and forwards and the lights will go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards so that's the theory. Uh, let's just quickly do this. First off, we'll get the... How much time we've got? We've got enough time, I think. Here's my little IC. My little 4011. So I have to plug this in first. <coughs> Hopefully this will not take too long. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to cough the whole time. So I'm just going to get out my book again. So I can remember where the, the power supply is. Uh, and get out these little silly things and we need a purple one so we're going to turn it off for now I'm not going to do this in circuit well in not in not in circuit while it's being powered which I guess is in circuit uh, where's the right length one I want a red one so that's that one uh, I honestly am not entirely sure that I can get this. Oh, what? This is the wrong size. I think I should have put this the other way around. Um, and that one can go there. Alright, I feel like this, this is going to cause a few problems. Um, uh, and so the nice handy thing is, is that the two inputs are... How does this work? Oh no, that's the input that I want to do there. All right, so that one's going to there. So all I care about, uh, we're gonna have to pick, hold on, this is the charging up one. So this is going to be, oh, I feel like I shouldn't have taken that out, should I? Well, it's too, no, it's not too late. All right, we're just going to get, uh, where are they all gone? There's a couple more 33Ks. Uh, literally, where did I put those, those three things? 
Um, all right, well, that's actually what I'll do. Um, and uh, I was going to use different colors. Oh, I know what I was going to use. I'll have to give me a second to go through all of the bits and pieces that I wanted to. Ah, I'm sure I had like them sitting right in front of me. Hmm. That's what you get when you plan ahead the night before and then try to do it. And then, what are these ones? These ones are 5k. That seems a bit, that doesn't seem like what I want. Alright, well then everything will just have to be this colour. So I'm just going to use some more of these. <laughs> so they're all going to be red. <coughs> so those are going to be my E capacitors on my little chart. E capacitors, E resistors. Um, and we're going to need... So that's the same as that one. So I'm going to use this one. Uh, to charge it. I'm going to keep the buttons there for now. Right, so I'm just putting in, I'm going to get out my little diagram. I'm just putting in this resistor here for the, the capacitor. So with the button one I had two different capacitors, two different resistors, my goodness. Um, so that I could, discharge, I could discharge and recharge at different speeds. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to do that with the circuit. Um, automatically but I'll have to think that one over and do it for the next time. I have an idea of how I think it would work. Um, Alright so next step is what do they do with these things? Um, okay so I kind of should have paid attention to how I made the little RS this is not the, the thing I wanted. I wanted this one. Okay. I feel like I'm running out of the short ones here. Okay, so... I have to make the RS flip-flop thing first. So the, the important thing on that is that the output of, it, of one goes to the input of another one. And it doesn't matter which. So I think that should be fine. So that's that one there, and we need another one. So the output of that one is <coughs> going to be coughed everywhere. So I've got the so now I've done the crossing over bit. So just another reminder of what the the how the gates are wired up. So now I've done the crossing over bit on this, which is that bit. Uh, first, next thing we have to do is realize that I just lost those resistors that I pulled out. No, they're right there. All right. So this is going to be my buffer resistor. Um, so I'm going to move these wires over to here because they're getting in the way. Uh, just going to double check. These so these are just wires to link all the breadboards together. <laughs> Alright, and so this is the bottom part of the voltage divider here. So I'm going to have to take that one out and do yet another little strange ziggy zaggy thing. I feel like I have to zigzag that one back to there. They're not going in quite as well as I th was hoping they would. This is going to be so tricky. I'm a bit worried that it's not going to actually get finished. Because I spent so long explaining it all. Um, which is to be expected. So, uh, oh gosh, what have I done? I've really mucked this up. Okay, that one goes there. That was the bottom one. So that one can go there. I'm going to need another one to take me to ground. So this is my buffer one. I think I know what I'm doing. And then I'm going to use the 470s. So these are my little tiny bits that I want at the end. And this is the 
the buffer. This is not making any sense, but I'm sure I think this will work. So no, there's no like there's there's two this one doesn't really matter, but this is going to be the first link in for the that one. So this wire has got to go. So the blue wire has to got to go to one op amp. And then we have to add one more over here. Um, and, oh, I've done it the wrong way around, haven't I? Well, I wasn't paying attention. So the buffer one has to go at the top with the, at the high voltage bit. Um, so I've done that completely wrong. So if I just put that one there, take that one out. Put that one to there. Put that one back to there. Okay, I'm just going to turn it on for a second and see if it still works. Oh, it's got a, like a faint light now. So I think I've done something a bit silly. No, what have I done? I've ruined it. I don't want to ruin this. I want it to work. Uh, do they have these the other way around? Or have they got these plugged in the wrong way? No, these go the correct way. Well, that's not a good start. Uh, do I have to review the camera settings? So that's going... So there are some legs touching, but I think they're fine. Mm. Alright, well, you're going to have to... Uh, why does the light not come on properly? That's always a bad sign. So I should get 5 volts across the whole thing here. And I'm getting 1 point... what? Okay, that's not what I was hoping for. Okay, it says 1.53 volts. So what have I done wrong? I've done something seriously wrong here. Hmm. Mm. I knew this was going to go wrong. I just had to restart the whole thing, and I? Oh, no, that's not even lining up. It is lining up. Okay. What have I done? Oh. I'll turn it back on. Huh. Mm hmm. I'm going to take that one out for a second. Does the light come on properly? It's not actually actually very bright. It's usually brighter than that. So that's just making me it does that when, when you've got like a short circuit somewhere. But I didn't change anything except for these wires here. Oh well that's probably something to do with it. Um but why? I'm just linking everything up. What have I done? Maybe there's something to do with this IC. So I'm going to untake that off for a second. And then I'm going to put... Oh! <laughs> okay. So I obviously wired this up wrong. I hope I didn't break it. That would be a sad way to start the day. Oh, I think I read it upside down. Oh, you know what? I had it the wrong way around. Okay. Well, there's a possibility that it still works. <laughs> A possibility. Seriously, I thought the notch was facing the other way. Mm. Wow, that has really made my day just that bit better. It's not hot or anything, is it? I don't know, can't tell. Thankfully, I've got a lot of those. So now it's back in and it's fine. And we're all good here. So I think that's fine. And we're going to have to put, where did I put them? Here. Alright, so this is my other test point. Alright, and so this is the point where the last remaining, um, let's just turn this up. So this is my LM324 that I haven't finished. So there's two, two left over here. I've got my little picture here, so remind me which way around they go. Um, so I want this, I think I want this one to go, I'm just going to guess for, to, to be honest right now, uh, we do need a few more wires to read off the voltage, so it's getting kind of cluttered isn't it, um, hold on, so this 
So, how much time we've got? Four minutes. Okay. <laughs> this is this is going to be a slow going video. This part here is my little cluster. Oh dear, I'm going to have to turn this around. Um, there's like a whole cluster of connections here, which is where the test points coming out and there's so many things that are reading the voltage um, so I'm, really, I'm going to be honestly surprised if this actually works given that you've got like um, are there any actual holes left? I think there are um, ok so this is, why did I pack them like this? so that one goes there that one goes there and I'm going to make another little link uh, I'm going to need the long nose pliers, except not these ones, the ones that actually work. <laughs> oh, there they are. Alright, to so put these in. So, that. Uh, in you go, come on. Oh, I've done that wrong. I'm going to tell you, this stuff can be kind of frustrating. <laughs> But it's going to be worth it in the end. I think I'm going to feel pretty chuffed if this actually does work. Right, so that one goes there. Uh, and what was I doing? Alright. And so this one has to go to the probably the positive input on this. Well, there's not going to be a lot of room here. I need a longer wire. Where are the longer ones when you need them? They're all the short ones. What about this one? That's not what I want. Mm. Well, here's a much, much longer one, so we'll just use that one, because that's annoying. So there's just going to be me playing around after I finish this to get the wires the right way around. I could just work, I did, I did try to work it out, but it's really kind of hard, to be honest. So that's actually got to go in there. Alright, and then we have to read the test wire from here, so blue... I feel like they should both be blue. But they're not going to be because I can't see another blue. Oh, here we go. There's a blue wire. Oh, there's a long blue wire. <laughs> no, I don't want a long one. I wanted a long one a minute ago. Okay. And these are going to be inputs onto these op amps. Um, so there. I think that's right. Just gonna look at my book, and the outputs are at the end. So the outputs are going to be going into the op amp, not the op amp. They're going to be oh, oh, that was a bad idea. You really, really, I really need that long wire. <laughs> okay, so that's not going to work. I'm going to need that one because it's going to be too long. Too sh Okay, there we go. So take, got that one, got that one. This one can come out. Because there this the, this thing is all the way over there. So I have to get that all the way over to there. So that's one blue ooh. I think this one's a bit sick. Alright, and then we need one more long one. And this is going to be the problem. I can't see any. Oh, here we go, here's a long one. We're all fine, we're all fine. I gotta tell you, when I've been buying these silly things, I just buy them in packs. I haven't actually paid too much attention um, to whether or not they're the right length. Okay, so where's the where's where's this gone? Where's it?